It's time for another Monday motivational message here on Grown Lady Chat. If you are a returning viewer, you know that I like to dedicate our Monday episodes specifically to motivational, inspirational, and encouraging messages. And in today's episode, I wanted to answer a question that is frequently asked, especially on social media, is how can we as women be more mature and more confident? Now, I'm sure that you have women in your circle, in your orbit, and even though they might be advanced in age, they don't act as mature as you'd expect for them to, or you might also know women in your circle where you're surprised at how mature she acts. Well, I want to submit to you that maturity and confidence, those things aren't age related. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my take on maturity and confidence as a woman of God. And of course, I would love to hear your input in the comment section below. Ladies, you know that I like to chat it up and continue the conversation. So be sure to chime in, all right? If there's something that resonates with you, or if you have something to add to the conversation, please do so in the comment section. Hey lady, welcome or welcome back to your new favorite talk show for Christian women, Grown Lady Chat, with me, your host, Dr. Sharonda Simone. This is the very first episode of 2024 for Grown Lady Chat. So regardless of when you're watching this episode, I still want to say Happy New Year to you. I pray that this year is a year of open doors and opportunities. When I was speaking with Holy Spirit and asking him what I should focus on this year, that is what he gave to me. And I shared that in last episode as well open doors and opportunities. So that is what I'm focused on. I'm believing God for this year, specifically in my life, in my personal and my professional life. So I pray that whatever God has for you in this year, it will find you. Welcome back to all of my returning viewers. Thank you so very much for going through this journey with me, ladies. We are nearing the end of season six here on Grown Lady Chat, and that just warms my heart. It excites me because I know that there's so much more that God God is going to do through me in this community and I'm so glad that you're here on this journey with me. If it's your first time tuning in, lady, make sure you chime in on the comments, all right? I want to give you a proper welcome and also don't forget to join my email community as well. So Grown Lady Chat is not just on social media. I in fact have a thriving email community and I would love for you to take part in that community as well. Hey lady, are you a woman who loves the Lord and who also enjoys beautiful things? Well, if you are, then you are personally invited to join my exclusive Christian women's group. In this group, we chat about clothes, beauty, home decor, parenting, marriage, cooking, and of course, our Christian walk. It's Christian lifestyle all encompassing. So be sure to join by clicking the link below. I hope to chat with you soon. Now back to our show. Maturity is a process, okay? Confidence is a process. It's not something where you just arrive and then you're done because life is ever changing. And we as women, we are complex individuals. And so our life structure is changing. So you might have found that maybe at one stage in your life, you felt as though you were truly mature and your level of confidence was heightened. But now, as you transition into another phase, another season of life, maybe that's not the case for you. So while we're talking about maturity and confidence, ladies, just know that it's not an end point. It's a continuous process and it's definitely a journey. Are you a woman who enjoys beautiful things? 34.5 Lifestyle has lovely, unique accessories for your everyday look and also for those special occasions. Click the link below to check out our latest accessory collection. Today's question of the day is this. Drop in the comments and let me know what is one of your favorite ways to move your body for exercise. As always, I will pin the question of the day down in the comment section and I'll share my response there as well. For the month of December, I did three giveaways. And the best way for you to enter the random monthly giveaways is by chatting it up in the comments and being engaged in Grown Lady Chat community. All right, so make sure you drop in the comments, comment on social media posts, and why not join the email community as well? Now, if you are a giveaway winner, you could get a gift card. You could get home decor items, makeup, skincare, beauty products, 
faith-based resources or personal development tools. When we're talking about being mature and confident, especially as a woman of God, we have to start with knowing who we are in Christ. In order for you to move with confidence, in order for you to move with purpose, you first have to go to the one who created you. Very often I find where women are trying to find themselves. You feel as though you're lost, you're in a vacuum, or you feel like you're closed into a space that doesn't feel quite right. Whether it's in your personal life, your professional life, in your relationships, very often women find themselves in this in this place of longing for more or longing for meaning and purpose in life look we've all been there and let me tell you the only way you're going to truly find where you need to be and truly identify your purpose is by going to God because he created you I tell my children this all the time God created you specifically for a reason in this world he gave you those eyes he gave you that skin color he gave you that hair that body in order for you to fulfill a specific purpose so in order for you to move with confidence ladies you have to first know who you are in Christ and why you were put on this earth now I personally believe that we will forever be finding out more and more about what God has in store for us I don't think it's just one thing and you're done no because our God is so grand he's so infinite I know personally in my walk with Christ that the more I get to know God the closer I get with him the more deep my relationship is with God I realize more and more about myself through him and about what he wants for me to do in this life so again I don't think it's a one-stop thing I, I truly believe that as we mature in Christ we mature as women because we are closer to who God called us to be and once we are moving in that way then our confidence is going to skyrocket because you're no longer wondering who am I doing this right am I supposed to be here am I supposed to be pursuing this career or pursuing this this endeavor you can say oh no I know because I'm close to the Lord because I can hear his voice I'm a sheep who I know his voice according to John 10 27 I know that I am moving in the direction that God has for me now remember, we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. You'll know that, look, my daddy is right behind me, he's got my back, and he has my plans already set up ahead of me. The next thing we can focus on as women working on our maturity and confidence is emotional intelligence. The conversation surrounding emotional intelligence has increased in the past few years, and according to the Oxford Online Dictionary, emotional intelligence is defined as the capacity to be aware of control and express one's emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. Emotional intelligence is the key to both personal and professional success. When I think of emotional intelligence, I think of knowing my own triggers, right? Knowing what's going to set me off, what's going to set me up. Also knowing when I'm hurting others and paying attention to that and being mindful of how I'm impacting the emotions of others. I also think of emotional intelligence as knowing when to speak up, but also when to stay quiet and learning how to master really high highs and really low lows. There are five key elements to emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Now, just like with any other learning objective in life, it's not one and done. I believe that again, as we transition through different phases, different relationships in life, we are going to find that we have to hone in on our emotional intelligence depending on the situation. I can remember so many times when I let my emotions get the better of me and I acted irrationally or I lashed out or maybe I allowed my lows to get so low that I had to really work and really harness the help of Holy Spirit to try and pull myself back up. So focusing on our emotional intelligence, our self-awareness and how we're impacting others, it's a great way for us to heighten our maturity because we are not just letting our emotions get the better of us. Instead, we're saying, okay, wait, no, let me pay attention. Let me truly focus on, you know, how I'm going to respond or how I'm going to allow something to impact me before I react. And when you're able to truly control yourself, then you'll be more confident, especially when you're speaking with others, especially when you're in, you know, social situations and even in your personal relationships. 
you're married, you and your husband need to work on emotional intelligence because sometimes when there are disagreements, you can find yourself saying things that you don't really mean and lashing out. Well, when we see people lash out and they don't control their tongue, they don't control their emotions, we usually associate that with uh, a very immature person, right? Usually young children do that. They just say whatever comes to their mind, they just blurt it out. In keeping with emotional intelligence, ladies, we've also got to know to set boundaries, all right? Know when to say no, know when to say yes, and stick with it. There will be times when your boundaries make other people uncomfortable, but a mature woman, a confident woman who is operating in her God-given purpose, and she is emotionally intelligent, she'll realize that yes, while my boundaries might not make everyone comfortable, sometimes others being uncomfortable is a part of life. And it's okay. As long as you are not setting out to hurt others, as long as you're not being, you know, a malignant person, as long as you're not trying to be negative and be hurtful, you have to accept in life that, yeah, your boundaries might not make other people feel comfortable, but those are boundaries that are necessary for you to live in sanity and live in peace. This next one is really, really huge. And it's one that, thank God, I learned at a very young age and it has been carrying me through life. Um, and it's to stop trying to fit in. Ladies, you're not made to fit in, especially as children of God, especially as women of God who are about our father's business, we are not made to fit in. We are made to stand out. Jesus tells us that we are to be salt and we are to be light. Salt enhances, salt adds to, salt doesn't blend into the rest of the seasoning. You know when a food has been salted and seasoned, right? You know when it's bland and has no flavor. So we are called to stand out. We're called to be light. So trying to fit in is a sign of immaturity. You know, I tell my children all the time, you're not going to be like everyone else. Thank God, okay? Because the masses are on some foolishness right now. So ladies, even in your big, big age, if you're still trying to fit in with everybody else, and I'm not talking about just to be contrary, just to be, you know, annoying. No, I mean, you're really just trying to fit in with everyone and just, you know, go along to get along. That's not a sign of maturity. That's a sign of immaturity because you weren't created to, to fit in. I remember when I first truly felt mature. It was probably around maybe age 13 or 14. I was having a conversation with my father and I was crying to him because I couldn't understand why people were just being mean. Like they were just trying to look for trouble, right? Now I've never been the type to just allow myself to be bullied, that's just not my nature. But still it was bothering me that people would even try to come for me because I like people, I'm a nice person, right? So it was bothering me and so when I went to him, and I was just saying, dad, what is the problem? Why are people doing this? Why are they attempting to try and bully me? Again, I don't let people bully me, but it was bothering me that they would even try. It didn't make sense to me. And that's when he told me, he said, my dear, you weren't made to fit in. And so you need to get used to doing many things by yourself. Not because you want to be a loner, but because not many people are going to want to go on that journey with you and they won't understand your calling and your purpose. And my father saw this about me at such a young age and I just took what he said and I believed it. And I've held on to it for all of these years, for all of these decades. And I tell my children the same thing. You weren't made to fit in. You are different. God made you specific and unique for a purpose. And lady, if you're at this age and you're still feeling as though you need to fit in and you need to, you know, go with the masses, don't do it. Don't give in. Instead, stand out, be salt in your environment, be light in your environment. And that is a sign of maturity, knowing that, guess what? I'm not going to fit into the box that everybody else fits into. I'm not going to morph myself into this little container and what the world expects for me to be. Not when God has given you this big, expansive personality and these big goals and dreams. Even if it's not big as in uh, a grand scale of a worldwide impact, but you in your own community, God has given you a mandate, a purpose. He has given you lives to reach. He has given you people to teach. He has given you goals and opportunities for you to pursue. And if you are so worried about fitting in and what will they say about me, that's a sign of immaturity. That's what young children do before they get their footing in life. Be confident in knowing that God made you different and unique. Even now, as an adult, there are times when I have to remind myself of this very concept. 
when I realized that amongst my family members, I might not always get invited to the outings or to the trips. For whatever reason, I have to remind myself, it's okay. You're not supposed to be invited everywhere. You are not supposed to be comfortable everywhere. And not everybody is supposed to be comfortable being around you. Mmm, this next one, ladies, this next one is a big one, but it's a huge sign of maturity and confidence. The ability to forgive others quickly. Now notice, I said forgive, I did not say forget. I believe that there is a place for forgiving the hurt, but not necessarily forgetting the hurt. The reason is because we have to use wisdom, all right? And I'm not saying that you're going to remember it so that you can throw it back in someone's face and you can, you know, mull over it and be sad and angry about it and get sick over it. No, but there is a place to remember so that you don't fall into the same trap as you did before. Remember, forgiveness is not for the person you are forgiving. It's for you because unforgiveness, it holds you, it traps you, it keeps you locked in. Just remember that when you hold on to a hurt, so much so that you can't say the person's name, so much so that you can't go to sleep at night, so much so that your stomach is in knots when you think about it, that is hurting you. It's hurting you physically, it's hurting you emotionally, it's hurting you spiritually, and it's not causing the other person any pain or grief. He or she is sleeping, they're getting up, they're living their life, but you're sitting there mulling over in this pain, in this hurt. It's doing you no justice at all. So instead, let's forgive quickly. Not saying that you're to get over it quickly. If you need help, if you need professional assistance, seek that. You need to go to God and say, Lord, I was really hurt. I'm talking about devastatingly hurt. Trust me, I've been there. And I wonder, God, how am I going to get over this hurt? How am I going to get over this pain? How am I going to move on? How can I wake up and just keep going forward? Ask the Lord for help. Again, if you need help with professionals, then get that as well. But lady, don't sit in the, the pain. Don't sit in unforgiveness. Don't put yourself in that jail, in that captivity, because it's only hurting you. Mature women, confident women are disciplined. They set their goals and they accomplish their goals. Even if it takes them multiple tries, even if it comes after multiple failures, even if it comes with pivot changes, they set their goals and they're disciplined. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. So if you struggle with being disciplined, maybe you're someone who you set goals and you start off really well, but then you fall to the wayside. Look, you're not alone. Don't try and do it alone. Ask Holy Spirit to help you. Say, Holy Spirit, I need help with discipline. Give me self-control. I do this all the time because in and of myself, Sharonda, she cannot do it. We get tempted to fall off the wagon. We get tempted to be lazy. We get tempted to do what we know we should not do. So therefore we say, Holy Spirit, help me. Give me self-control and tap into the help from Holy Spirit. Assert yourself. A woman who is mature and confident has no problem asserting herself, speaking up for herself, saying when something doesn't feel right, sharing her own opinions, saying when something does feel right, when she agrees with something, even if everybody else is looking at her like, oh, I can't believe you would agree with that. She's confident enough and she's mature and comfortable enough in her own skin to say, no, this is how I feel. These are the reasons I feel that way. And she's not going to be apologetic about it. Now, remember, we're saying this as Christian women. So we can't just be assertive and asserting ourselves and our own ideals and morals separate from the word of God. Okay. But as a woman who is mature and confident, you should be able to say, this is how I feel. This is what I'm experiencing. This, uh, these are my opinions. This is my perspective and not worry if other people agree with you. Now, one thing I will say though, is that as we are asserting ourselves, we should do so tactfully. I remember growing up, my mother would always remind me like, yes, we get it. You're assertive. And I've always been that way. I've always been able to speak my mind freely and confidently. However, I did not always have tact. I had to learn that not all the time should I share my opinion. Sometimes people don't need to hear what I have to say, but I had to learn tact. Sometimes we need to keep our mouths shut. Sometimes we need to find a better way to express ourselves. We don't need to just blurt out the first thing or thought that comes to our minds. 
growing up, I was that little girl who would just speak her mind all the time, whether she was asked or not. <laughs> I was that person that my parents were like, oh my gosh, what did Sharonda just say? Because I would just call somebody else. For example, my parents were good friends with this man. They were in business with him and he was a smoker. Every time I saw him, he was smoking. And I had just learned in school that smoking is not good for your health, okay? So I thought to myself, okay, here is this man. Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe they didn't teach him in school that smoking is not good for you. So I was going to tell him every single time I saw him, hey, that's not good for you. You're literally killing yourself. Don't do that, sir. And I would repeatedly say this. I was like four or five. I was a very young child, but still I was confident in saying, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. You're hurting yourself. Don't you care about your family? Don't you care about your wife and kids? I mean, I was that little girl. And so I remember my parents saying, look, Sharonda, we know that you're saying the right thing. What you're saying is true. And we know that you're saying it from a good place. You truly mean well. However, he didn't ask your opinion. He heard you the first time. You can stop. <laughs> so I had to learn tact. And over the years, my mother has had to remind me, you've got to say things tactfully and sometimes no one to say nothing at all. And that goes back to the emotional intelligence piece. Ladies, if you're enjoying today's discussion so far, make sure you smash the like button and spam the comment section. I would love to get your feedback. Accepting where you are without settling where you are is a huge step in the journey of maturity and confidence. Whether we're talking about weight loss, financial goals, relationship goals, professional growth, it's important for us to notice and recognize where we are, but also recognize that we still have room to grow and we still have a ways to go. I was listening to the diary of a CEO on YouTube and one of the guests was saying that happiness is the gap between reality and our expectation. Now happiness and joy are two different things, okay? Joy comes from God and joy is deeper and it is not impacted by life circumstances. So for example, you can be having a rough day at work and your happiness might be lower, but your heart still has joy because you have the promises of the Lord. You still have the goodness of the Lord. You still have your hope through God. So joy and happiness are two different things. Joy as a Christ follower is rooted in knowing God and knowing that with God, you always win, okay? The fight is fixed, but happiness, that's a more fleeting emotion and it's always a choice. I remind myself of this, I have to remind my children of this, that happiness is a choice. So our goal then, as we are thinking about being more mature and being more confident in life, our goal is to try and close the gap between our reality and our expectations. And so yes, sometimes that means you will have to change your expectations, especially in situations where you don't have control or when there are other people, other circumstances that are going to impact the reality. But that does not mean that you settle. Acceptance is not settling. Acceptance is saying, okay, this is where I am now financially. This is where I am now with my relationship, with my weight loss goals, healthy lifestyle goals. This is where I am now. But I still know that with time, with discipline, with making proper choices, with maybe shifting, I can see a different outcome, all right? So something else can come down the line. So happiness is a choice, and I choose to look at what I've accomplished so far versus what I haven't. And I think that is a good marker of maturity and confidence, because instead of beating yourself up and saying, oh, you didn't do it this time, oh, you failed again, oh, you didn't hit the mark, Instead of sitting there and brewing and stewing in that negativity, yes, you recognize, okay, I didn't hit the mark. Okay, I didn't reach my goal, right? But you don't sit there. Instead you say, however, I did accomplish this. I did hit this milestone. For example, my weight loss goals. I've shared this openly here on Grown Lady Chat. Am I at my goal weight? No. But have I made strides? Yes. Have I made changes? Yes. Am I better than where I was before as far as my goals? Absolutely. 
again for grown lady chat my goal was to be at 1000 subscribers or 1000 viewers here on grown lady chat by the end of the year that was my goal and i started grown lady chat first episode in july so we're talking about july august september october november december so i gave myself a certain time frame to accomplish what is really a very difficult goal okay if you've ever started a youtube channel you know that it is not easy to amass a certain number of subscribers and followers so even though i have not hit my goal and it is you know already january i'm still very pleased because i was consistent i posted content i stuck to a schedule I did not fall off, even though there were times when I felt very discouraged, when I was like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? It's not reaching as many people as I wanted for it to reach. But I said, no, Lord, whoever's supposed to see it and hear it, it will reach them. And so I'm focused now on what I have accomplished so far and not just what I still have yet to accomplish. Accept where you are, but don't settle there. We've all heard this statement before, and it's a good statement, so I'm going to share it. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And I know that we've all heard that, we understand what it means, but a mature and confident woman practices self-care. Self-care is not selfish, it is a necessity. Because as we're going about life and we are natural born nurturers and givers, we are caretakers, we will give and give and give until we're depleted and then we have nothing left for ourselves. And so then we're pouring from an empty cup, which means we're giving little to nothing because there's nothing to pour from. So whether you are focused on external self-care, making sure you pamper yourself and put yourself together, or you're focused on the internal self-care, doing the work, right? Leveling up with your personal development. It is important when we are maturing and working on our confidence for us to practice self-care. All righty, lady, that is it for today's episode. Don't forget to answer the question of the day down below. Let's make sure we continue the conversation in the comment section. Also too, I look forward to chatting with you in the email community. Click the link in the description box to join ASAP. And until next episode, remember I am Dr. Sharonda Simone and I will either see you at the top or from the top, you decide. Bye.